So this video is looking specifically at how we calculate um, the steps of a reaction mechanism using rate data. So in order to determine information about the mechanism, what we have to do is we have to use two equations. We have to use the overall equation for a reaction. So the reaction we're going to do is CH3Br or bromomethane and we're going to react that with a nucleophile or H minus and we're going to form CH3OH and Br minus. So this is our overall uh, reaction uh, for what's happening. And what I need to do is I need to compare that with the rate equation for the reaction. Now remember the rate equation can only be determined through experimental data. It can't be predicted. So for this reaction, um, possibly we've done this as part of a previous exam question, but rate is equal to K and then the concentration of um, bromomethane. You can see that the OH minus isn't in the rate equation and that has a significant consequence that we need to remember and the consequence is this if a reactant does not appear in the rate equation it is not involved in the rate determining step it is not involved in the slowest stage of a reaction so when you set this out in your exam set it out um, as step one step two and then overall now, whilst they can ask you to, um, to do a three-step mechanism, uh, this is less likely, and if they do, they will give you additional information. So we're going to start with a basic one here and just do a two-step mechanism. So what I've got to use is this is our overall reaction that takes place, and that means that the end result must equal this. That's what I add, that's what I take away. Now that isn't to say that there aren't other things that are created in this reaction that are used up in the mechanism itself, and we call these intermediates. So we have our overall, so we've got to use that as our, as our check, that after we've done these two steps, they have to give us this. Now this is the mark that you should always get in your exam, which is that you get a mark for working out the left-hand side of this first reaction because that is the rate determining step and that depends entirely on this quantity here so we have chbr and it's the power of one which means stoichiometrically i just have one molecule of this on its own that's going to react now because it's not reacting with anything else there's only one thing that can happen to it which is that it must break apart. It's the only possibility. So that is going to react. So if you get that left-hand side of that first reaction, you get a mark. So that's the mark you should get guaranteed. Other things that you should then do is then fill in the information you know with confidence. So I've got two reactants here. One is CH3Br and one is OH-. I haven't added my OH- yet. So that has to happen in my second step. Now, I'm going to have an intermediate formed in this first step that then has to be used up again in this step. So what is useful to do at this point is to check to see which of the products is possibly going to be formed here. And we haven't added OH yet, so it can't be this. So what will happen in this first step, and this is the bit where you've got to sort of take your uh, sort of judgment, is that the CH3Br, we know that it can split. Since we know we need to get a Br, that will split, which will leave us with CH3+. 
That, therefore, is going to be our intermediate that's going to react here. CH3 plus will then combine with our OH minus, so the charges will cancel, and we will then form CH3OH, which is our final step. And so if we check this now, we can see that overall two things are added, one mole of each, uh, bromomethane and hydroxide iron, and two products are produced, uh, methanol and the bromide iron, and our intermediate is used up in both, uh, is used up, that's produced in the first step is used up in the second step. So remember that the rate equation gives you your rate determining step, which is the left hand side of your first step. Then add any additional reactants in the second step that you haven't used already, and then work out what is a sensible intermediate and when your products are likely to be formed. And that is how you do um, mechanisms using rate data. If they ask you an example where you have a three-step mechanism, what they might do is give you information about one of those steps that will enable you to then, through process of elimination, work out what the third step is.